Zuzan Thele is typically brown. So when we think of a colorful coral, brown doesn't come into that sort of uh, equation there, but brown is actually a really healthy color for a coral because it has an abundance of Zuzan Thele. In an aquarium, we try and strip away excess Zuzan Thele, or Zooks as I'll just refer to it from now. And we use a bunch of different elements and bromide is one of them as a regulator it regulates the amount depending on how much you dose the more you dose the more is stripped out it essentially bleaches the coral but in a good way um, if you want to push the bar and take your reef tank to the next level then a lot of uh, reefers are getting into icp testing and that's where we can uh, use one of the, the ICP services around and there's be quite a few popping up on, around and there's some tried and, trust, tried and tested uh, companies around that have uh, been doing it for a while. So we can utilize that service and we can look at the results of your ICP test and then we can utilize the individual micro elements to adjust levels and really tweak the corals inside of the tank, whether we want to make something more yellow or more green or shiny or something. And I asked you yesterday, is it anecdotal evidence or it's actual evidence that certain micro elements can affect our coral? 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So I can't put you on the spot and let's go down the list. I don't have a list here, but it's just going to start from B, bromide. F bromide is uh, fantastic for... Uh, so it's one of those Zuzanthele re uh, regulators. So Zuzanthele is a symbiotic algae within a coral. Mm. And we call it, so Zuzanthele is typically brown. So when we think of a colorful coral, brown doesn't come into that sort of uh, equation there, but brown is actually a really healthy color for a coral because it has an abundance of Zuzanthele. In an aquarium, we try and strip away excess zooxanthellae or zooks as I'll just refer to it from now. Right. And we use a bunch of different elements and bromide is one of them as a regulator. It regulates the amount depending on how much you dose. The more you dose, the more is stripped out. It essentially bleaches the coral, but in a good way. Yeah. Um, bromide is actually one of my favorite elements for goni, especially glitter goni. Every time you've got the bromide dose perfect yeah, the glitters just yeah it's great okay that's my glitter goni is in fact my indicator corals uh, which we can get into a later date but uh these are my yeah using corals as indicators for trace elements and yeah glitter goni is my bromide indicator so no the colors for bromide not really it's across the board like okay yeah uh borb boron reds and pinks with some pinks. Yeah, I like to keep my boron slightly elevated as well. It also has a nice effect on pH. Um, again, we're just doing something cuff chromium. Um, that's another Zizantele regulator. And, and uh, I believe it actually has a, um, uh, effects on vitamin uptake as well. Like uh, I'd have to do a bit more reading there, but I'm pretty sure chromium actually affects how the, the vitamins are taken in so as you grow everything so they're taken up with chromium and you there's any new product for six months old or something with coral uh was always been in trace b uh or the the calcium the component of the primary yeah but um it's very it's new as an individual element yeah okay yeah. uh iron iron is good for macro algae so if you're doing a refugium, you can, your iron will be depleted really quickly. In general, even without macroalgae, iron is just sucked out if you're acquiring really quickly. The other thing that iron's really, really good for is the color green. Um, and a lot of people have these beautiful toxic neon green corals and iron really makes them pop. Um, it's also the arch nemesis of people who keep SBS because the slightest amount of iron extra can turn all of their beautiful pastel yellows to be green. And yellow is a really hard color to to get and keep. So iron's one of your overdosing indicators there. So do you don't so you don't dose 
I oh, definitely does it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's status, but you just uh, in in therapy you come out. So that's why, like, with the primary care and the 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 amounts that are in it are what we've tested on the farm and everything. But you can dose more if you're growing, so you're using more. That's what the the individual element you can get that as well. If the coral, if you had a yellowed coral and it does slightly turn green, can it go back to yellow? If you need to it, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. And SPS especially, because they, they fluctuate their colors with like their trace elements really, really fast. Okay. Uh, iodine. Iodine, great for soft corals. And um, as they are, like a disinfecting and cleansing or the color in there, like um, it's a tissue builder in soft corals. So yeah, they, yeah, like discosoma or the mushroom corals and uh, soft corals like leathers and toadstools, cinularia. They use a lot of iodine, so we tend to have a, like at, at the coral farm, we've got a soft coral system, and that has iodine on its own being dosed in as well, because it's predominantly soft corals, where they use a lot more, mm-hmm. um, and also it's great for uh, cleansing corals as well, I say if in a dip situation, you can use uh, the KI3, which is a potassium iodide, mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a form of iodide. Mm-hmm. Um, and also iodine is in overdosed amounts it can turn corals green as well so uh, not a good thing so there's another indicator is like he could be having an iodine issue yeah um, but yeah iodine is the primarily used for soft corals for us anyway okay potassium fantastic for a range of colors pinks blues reds um can you have those Yes, but it gets a bit, uh, potassium overdose is, uh, kind of like typically noticed in SPS again. So it, I'm going to refer to things being noticed in SPS a lot more when we're referring to, uh, trace element overdose because SPS are the first corals that are affected. They're very, very reactive and delicate and silky at the slightest changes. And so when we're talking about potassium, there we go, uh, a little bit tied with nitrate here, but we can get burnt SPS tips, and sometimes uh, the base of corals tends to peel up a little bit when you've overdosed. Uh, otherwise, it's one of the most important, like it's hugely important to be kept and continuously dosed. Um, it's one of the big components in coral skeleton as well. So they or in serious thing you one of your primary cares. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All of these. Yeah, all of these elements are in the primary care that built in, in in ratios that we've found therapeutic to be all yeah. useful and therapeutic on the corals of Um but yeah, the uh, potassium is like a, a macro element almost because it's in large parts per million. We keep it around four hundred ppm. Calcium's around four twenty ppm. It's it's up there with the levels that we'd keep primary care. Okay. Uh, molybdenum. Uh, excellent for macroalgae. Uh, um, pretty much, um, pretty much all we really use that for, to be honest. So no corals really. Yeah. At, at this stage, like with, um, with the entire, uh, I don't know, like farming of corals and, and and what's there to learn we're always learning things like that so um we know that these elements are important and so far we kind of just use them for the macro use and other sort of things but when we do have mo well can't go for molecular um i don't know really short them when they're tough and tired <laughs> um but yeah the uh when we have our mo in check we do notice that corals are generally happier and nicer and whether you can correlate that directly to MO or that all of the other elements in check as well. But um, we're always testing corals or testing on corals and testing elements. And, and that's so we're continuously learning and we might be able to pinpoint exactly what MO does in the near future because we have a broad range of corals that we can test on. And, okay. Yeah. Um, another new trace you just brought up, I'm sure is in your traces now, is... Um... Manganese? Yeah, manganese is excellent. Okay. So why didn't you guys release it like through Addison individual? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, to learn more and therefore... Well, 
the reason for the individual elements is the cult the the rise in people doing ICP tests. It's got yeah. So we were finding that people uh, that kept certain species of coral for for example acans or Micromisa, what how it says tiny corals and gonies especially really do suck down manganese to use that was an example so in those particular dominated tanks that has those corals we'll see depleted amounts more than someone who just has uh soft corals <laughs> so those individual element ranges were brought out so that people using an icp test service can grab those uh results back and pretty much adjust everything they want. They can add that directly to their primary care range and dose it as per their aquarium needs. Because all the firms are different. Like you can't you can't carbon copy an aquarium from house to house or with facility to facility. Even though we just tested and everything on a coral farm, there's still differences between everyone's system. Mm-hmm. Okay. But manganese is one of your Go to yeah, it's great. So yeah, I've got a lot of people to. I think it's overall going up for health. Okay, um, it, it's a it's great for keeping them extended and um, and it's tied heavily with iron as well. Mm-hmm. Manganese. It's um, said so, uh, I suspect it could have something to do with reds, but I haven't quite really tested that properly. Okay, but it, but it reds in LPS specifically. Okay, uh, the nickel. Nickels and others is a fellow regulator, um, and also our vitamin uptake as well. Um, so when your vitamins tend to be used better when you've got nickel in check, and it's such a minute amount, it's not worth chasing numbers on that one. Like if you're getting an ICP test, it's always zero. You, that's what you want. Okay. You don't want values of nickel, but you just want to yeah. You just want to know that you're adding it. Okay. Having a zero or undetectable ICP result on nickel is great, as long as you're adding it as well. That means your aquarium's using what you've added, and it's good. Okay, zinc. Zinc, another two zinc, they let it uh, We put a lot of those in then, uh, in small amounts, each different one, yep. um, because everything in moderation, especially to zinc, they like, because it's, that's what everyone wants, is to keep your corals bright. Okay. Um, we get hopefully we get into the end. I'm, I'm starting to wrap my brain now. Uh, strontium, strontium. That is another excellent one. Even though it's a micro trace element, it's one of the biggest building blocks of coral skeleton. So um, it's used as a uh, binder with the calcium, and it's used to strengthen the tip, the, the skeleton itself. So as the corals pre- precipitate and build the skeleton, they suck up the strontium with it, and they bind it all together. It's like cement. Well, I want to see it. So we've been selling that for a while, the, the strontium, yeah. but it doesn't move as much as everything else, and it's in a 100 mil bottle. Yeah. And why is that in a 100 mil compared to the 50? It's hard to get the concentration down. Uh, so to keep it the same concentration as the smaller models, because it's not as soluble in water, basically. Okay. So to keep it the same concentration and the same strength as that, it, we have to double the size of the bottle, basically. So there's obviously something that the community doesn't know if we're not selling much of it, we sell a lot. Yeah. But strong tip is probably one of the least that we sell. Is there something you well, give to the community to, to start saying, you know, like, hey, pay attention to this? Yeah, you can definitely keep going. Is it every day, every ICP test? Well, it's for, well, first of all, it's built into the primary care range. Okay, so... And- and we doesn't have too many people that have an issue with strontium. Okay. Um, so we feel that the range that we put in there is pretty good fit for all, mm-hmm. but it can change. And people tend to the chase numbers are already years ago. I was playing with strontium at uh, levels of 12 parts per million instead of around the eight that's recommended. Mm-hmm. And years, it was mainly when I started noticing brittle coral skeletons. I know it. So if you've got a fish that likes to swim close to corals and you can actually get branches knocked off on SPS. So when you start seeing that, you just got to have a look at your strontium levels. If something feels brittle or powdery, it's like there's not enough glue in this. 
in the in the corals hill and sort of thing. Okay, uh, a fluoride. Uh, so there's a fellow regulator as well. Uh, again, and uh, also uh, it's another coral skeleton element, and it's in there. I think it's, it's precipitated as another like calcium. It's precipitated as something else, but it's a, yeah, it's an odd one. It's also not readily testable in an ICP test. Yeah. So they use a different machine to test that. Okay. But um, yeah, some of the services do still test that for you. 